Welcome to Bill's Bridge Corner, Thursday, March 27, 2014, putting it all together. We're going to have a series of hands in which you're asked to bid and play. We'll go through them question at a time throughout the entire hand. Here's the first hand. You should use all of the material we've had covered so far, and you may have a different answer, and it's all right if you and your partner agree to it. Here we go. Hand one, this is your hand. First question, evaluate your hand using Bergen's evaluation method. What do you get? Question number two, what is your opening bid? Question number three, which is really kind of dumb because it answers question two, partner responds one spade. What is your rebid? Here are the answers. You have 13 high card points. You have to subtract one for adjust three. You've got too many queens and jacks and only one ace. And you have to subtract one point for queen doubleton. But you can add one point for a doubleton. It gives you 12 high card points, 12 starting points. Many wouldn't open this hand, but using the rule of 20, you would open one club. Answer to question two. Partner bid to spade what you rebid, one no trump. Questions four through six. Partner now bids two diamonds. It could be natural or new minor forcing, but your convention card says new minor forcing. What does it promise? Question five, what is your next bid? And question number six, partner responds three no trump. What is your bid? Answers. New minor forcing promises 11 or more starting points. The invitational hand or better. You are to assume he is looking for three card support for his major, which is spades, or four cards of the other major, if you don't have three of his. And since you have four hearts, you bid two hearts. You're minimum, so you can only bid two hearts. If you are maximum, you could bid three. Partner now bids three no trump. What do you bid? You pass and hope he can make. Actually, it's you. You're going to play it, so here we go. Here we go. You are in three no trump. West leads the two of diamonds. Dummy comes down. Plan your play. We're going to do a lot of analysis before we play even the first card at trick one. Start, we count winners. We have one spade, one heart, two diamonds, and one club. Five tricks. We need four more tricks. Variety of ways we might get them, but let's keep analyzing. You are fortunate that the opponents did not lead hearts. Actually, they led diamonds, and you have more diamonds than they do. Based on the opening lead, West probably has four diamonds. He led the two. East has two cards higher than the two, any two cards. So he could have any two diamonds. You need to develop tricks in the black suits in order to make your hand. Continuing the analysis. Let's look at spades. If you're going to play the spades, the right play is to lead low toward the queen first. That will develop a sixth trick regardless of what happens, whether it loses or wins. If spades split 3-3, you could take four spades. And that would be almost enough to make the contract. What is West's distribution? He likely has no five-card suit. Think about it. He led diamonds. He had four diamonds. He shouldn't have any suit longer than four, so he has no five-card suit. That helps a lot in the analysis of this hand. The hard honors are probably split, because if they weren't, hearts would have been a natural lead, given the bidding. So the king and queen of hearts must be split between east and west. Clubs should present three tricks. They could even present four if the finesse is on. The question is, should I tackle clubs or spades first? A 
I've got to decide that before I decide my play to trick one. If the club finesse is on, I can set up three or four tricks before the hearts are tackled. But if it's off, I could lose too many tricks before addressing clubs. Therefore, I should tackle spades first, which means I need the entry to be in the north hand. Therefore, I should take the first trick in dummy with the ace of diamonds and lead a spade toward the queen. Is that your analysis? Well, I do that and it loses to the king of spades and back comes a heart to east king. The question now is, should I hold up, and if so, how long? Well, let's look at the hand at trick three. Here we are at trick three. We've won the ace of diamonds on the board. We've led a spade to the queen, lost to the king, and back comes a heart to the king. Should I hold up? Well, if the club finesse is off, it doesn't matter what I play, I'm going to be down. We have to have the club finesse be on. Because of that, there's no reason to hold up. You should take the ace of hearts and lead the queen of clubs. If it loses, you're down anyway. Think about it. You lead the queen of clubs and it holds. Now you lead the five of clubs and put in the ten. And it holds! And you play the ace of clubs Bells, the king of clubs. Your contract is now safe. Now take your spades. And what happened? Spades split 3-3. Three, three. That's amazing. Not, not expected, but it's amazing. Two more spade tricks, pitching a heart and a diamond, and you end up making five. But even if the spades don't split, you're going to make your contract. Did you play this hand right? Well, I hope you did. Tomorrow, we're going to give you another challenging hand, class 156. See you tomorrow.